Truth be told, I don't have a very good cold open for today's episode, so I'm just going to lay it out there. We're talking whoa, Batman, black and white statue, Norm Brayfogle, Batman, black and white statue. Oh yeah. Stay tuned. Welcome to the 905, the channel where we talk about comics, collectibles, and whatever. My name is Rob. Thank you so much for tuning in. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for stumbling into the channel. Uh, hopefully you'll like what you see. And I just actually mean the content, not necessarily this guy. Um, and uh, do me a favor, you can subscribe if you'd like. Uh, and if you're returning, please do me a favor and subscribe if you already haven't. Uh, also, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think of this video. And as always, leave a comment down below. So let's just kind of get into it. As you can see, I've got a, a few collectibles behind me. I've talked about having some statues. And in an earlier episode, I talked about the affordability of, of having small statues. You don't need to have these great big giant Prime 1 or Sideshow collectible statues. If you wanted to go with a smaller scale, you can. That works with my budget. And so that's what I have done. And today I wanted to showcase, I'm just going to go rare to the, you know, fire off on all cylinders. I'm going to show the one that's in my top three statues. So... As you may or may not know, DC Collectibles has been working on this line of Batman black and white statues, and they are essentially exactly what they're, they are. They're statues of Batman or of his cast of characters, whether it's Robin or Penguin or Joker or Harley Quinn, whatever, that are, are you know painted in black and white. It's based off of a, uh, I believe it was a 2002 comic book series. Um, and so this world has kind of uh, developed and, and expanded over the last number of years. I believe they're up to a statue 106. 100 was the Todd McFarlane um, homage statue that they did, which I still haven't been able to get my hands on, but that's a whole other issue altogether. Um, but this one is in my top three. I'm a big fan of Norm Brayfogle. As a kid who grew up in the 80s uh, reading Batman comics, Brayfogle was one of those artists who you just gravitated towards because his Batman just looked so cool. I loved it. Uh, up there with Neil Adams as well, but I just really enjoyed Bray Fogel's um, art. And as you can see, this is taken from a Detective Comics uh, issue uh, that he did the art for and the, the cover artist for. So, and so actually, when it came up and I saw it at, uh, about a year and a half ago at a local uh, comic convention, I grabbed it. I think it was like you know three or four dollars, whatever. It didn't make a difference. I just wanted it because I wanted it to display with this statue so let's just get into it we're going to dive into the statue the box art and everything and uh, i'll explain to you why i love the statue so much okay so there is the comic that i was mentioning before the detective comics 587 look at that price tag 75 cents uh, a dollar in canada um remember when comics were that cheap holy moly at any rate um here's the box that it comes in um, you know, standard box. It's got the styrofoam in it. You've got a, a picture of what the statue looks like on the side. Um, DC have a nice little, hey, collect these ones too. You've got um, the Jim Lee uh, Nightwing statue, which I do have. We'll do uh, an overview or just, I guess, a quick review of that uh, another time. And a Batman by uh, Amanda Connor. Nice close-up on on the, the, the torso and face. Uh, I just love the... The sculpting on this statue is just phenomenal, and uh, we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. The front, the, the top's got the Batman black and white. The bottom's got nothing. Um, there we go. I'm kind of trying to do a cool trick. Oh, crap. Okay, so when you're opening the box, uh, obviously you've got uh, the base here. Now, a lot of statues, these black and white statues, are generally in two pieces. You have the base, and then you have the... The statue itself in some cases is one piece in this case is three pieces so hey is that confusing for you guys um so there you are the base of the statue with the with the symbol uh whoops okay and i've broken it um this number is number two 2489 of 5000 okay, here's some inside baseball sometimes they manufacture or they make you know these things go out of out of stock or out of print and they make a new version of it um here's how to tell whether or not you have an original version or not this is a, a first version. The the outside rim of the symbol is all black. If you see it and if it's all white, that means it's usually a second run on it. Um, so here we are with Batman himself. This is the statue it comes in. So you see, you see good old Bruce is headless, um, but he just ports right into the um, well the keyhole, and then his his. Uh, 
cape and cowl and head are all one piece. It's floating head. Um, but it's got a, um, as you can see, a magnet on there. It literally just slides right in, and he is good to go. And there he is, our Brayfogle Dark Knight. Okay, so earlier when I was talking about like the the sculpting based on that box, I mean, no matter which way you turn this and which whichever way you want to have it um, displayed, the, the the sculpting on this is just phenomenal. Uh, point out to his arms and legs, like his gauntlets, his forearms here, they are more of like a glossy finish. The rest of his costume, aside from uh, maybe the the symbol, is more of a dull, muted um, black or gray. The juxtaposition of these. Um, of these gauntlets and boots shining is a bit unique to this one statue not all the black and whites have that um, look at the size of those gauntlets though look at that those fins holy moly one of the things I wanted to highlight on, on this statue is the cape it has a very um, textured leather look to it I'm not sure if you can see that or not on the camera at least I can see it on my screen but just kind of wanted to show that to you you can see the bit of the light ref uh, bouncing off of it um, but it's got this leathery look to it, which is just unreal. Um, and which is not part of the, the inside. Now the inside of the cape is like dull muted. And as you can see at the top here, you've got that leather, that leather look. So it, you know, it's just these little things that just add to the enjoyment when you're looking at this statue. It, it stands seven inches tall, which is not that tall at all. Um, it the the width to this highest point is about well, about five inches or so. So you, it's it's easily portable to wherever you want to display it. Whether it's a bookshelf, a bookcase, a floating shelf by your computer, maybe you've got one of those beds with a shelf on it. You want to put it up there? That's fine. Just don't knock it over. Uh, lest be one of these things come and impale you in your eye. At the end of the day, it's very easy for you to, to put this wherever you want to display your statues. The nice thing about these black and white lines is that it's very, you know, they're all about the same size and they just represent the comic art so well. And it's so gorgeous to look at. Um, I mean, look at the, the muscle tone in his legs and whatnot. The, the sculpt work on this is absolutely fabulous. Most of the collectibles and statues that I have are of Batman because I'm a fan of this black and white line. And uh, But out of all of my collectibles, this is definitely in my top three. I love looking at this statue. I display it in my case with the, the comic in the background, as you can see. Um, and you just can't go wrong. This is a great representation of a classic, classic posing cover as drawn by Norm Brayfogle. It's uh, the Batman black and white. Um, and this thing just rocks. So there you go. There is my overview or my review of my Batman black and white statue based on the work of Norm Brayfogle. It is sculpted by Chris Dahlberg. I forgot to mention that earlier. I just want to give the guy credit because this statue is absolutely gorgeous. And if you can, try to get your hands on it because you won't be sorry. So contact your local comic shop. Maybe they have one uh, in a storeroom somewhere. Maybe they have another customer who is willing to part with it or maybe a Facebook group if you can. Um, if you have an opportunity to get your hands on it, if you see it at a local con coming up, I mean, things are opening, so you never know. If you do see it, I would I would highly recommend picking it up. You will not be sorry. It is gorgeous to look at. And hopefully you've enjoyed this review. And if so, do me a favor. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you have this or if you're on the hunt for it or what other statues that you may have. Until next time, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe. Take care. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know it went well. Um, just trying to think of the next um, couple of episodes I want to record. Just want to get some more done in advance. I'm not too sure what's next, but I think I, I might have to get into unwrapping and doing a overview of this Batman Omnibus by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah? What do you think? Stay tuned. <laughs>